Hello, it's Jason Patrick, Gold Banker, Dan Hopper Realtors. Today I'm back out the community of Vintage Oaks in New Braunfels, Texas, because I got some clients who are seriously considering uh, purchasing the lot behind me, uh, being sold by the developer. This is a large lot with a little bit of to topography in the back end. But we've got uh, Trevor from Grand Endeavor going out with us. We're going to be exploring the lot so he can give his opinion of it before my clients pull the trigger. And I think that's always a great idea to have a builder walk the lot just so uh, they can give you a good assessment of the lot. Is there enough space? Is the foundation gonna be uh, overpriced to, for what the client's looking for? Anyways, let's go for a walk through the woods. Now there's not a lot of space right up front. You see where that electrical box is, that's one of the lot lines, and there's the other post. So you're definitely gonna have to have your driveway kind of going through here and getting to the spot. There is a clearing that you're gonna see a little bit later that might be a perfect spot to build a house but we are on the edge of a cul-de-sac. You see some of this lots here have already been cleared, so that's kind of what this would look like if you got rid of the cedar. Uh, we are on Powder Ridge. You do have 2272 over there, so there can be a little bit of road noise, but it's not overwhelming. But there is another house right next door that's already been built, so you kind of see kind of where the setbacks would be, and it'd be kind of right next to it, so you would have a neighbor kind of beside you once you get the clearing, but holy crap, this is a large lot. It goes way back there, and eventually, yes, you're gonna have a neighbor building from this post to that electrical box, and it pies back way far that way too. All right, let's head on into the woods. All right, this lot does pie back, so you're gonna have a really narrow front. You see that on my little fancy dancy app, the blue dots where I'm at right now. So we're gonna walking down the left-hand side. Uh, Trevor for Grand Endeavor, he's already crawling through the woods, inspecting this lot to kind of give his opinion of it. You see the left-hand side markers. And we're gonna go try to find him and get his opinion of this lot in real time. There he is, I see his shirt. <clears throat> Is this yeah, I'm on. What you thinking so far? It's a gorgeous piece of property. So as you know, it's very narrow in the front and it tapers back. Um, and because it has a lot of cedar trees, it's hard to see a lot of the small stuff that kind of clogs it, but there are some bigger cedar trees. You don't know if you want to keep those or not, right? For sound privacy. But if you open it up some, and actually what I think is, is the best home sites a little farther back and it's fairly open already, but would need some additional clearing behind and around to find, you know, the right position for a house. Can we walk back there and see what that uh, clearing site looks like? Yep. Haven't seen a lot of oak trees. Unfortunately, to put the house in the right spot topography wise and view wise, a few of these medium sized oaks may go, but there's way more oaks in here than you think. If you can see them, once you get these cedars yeah, there's cleared one. out, yeah. there's some gorgeous oaks throughout yep. here. And sometimes you got to try to work around, like that's a really big one over there on that side. But you also want to open up your view of this valley, which is going to be really nice. So this is the optimal plateau that we're in right here and it's fairly cleared already. I don't know if they came in here and already did this, possibly. Let me pull up where we are on my little map here. I mean, look at the valley. Once you get these cedars cleared out. You see the blue dot on the map? That's where we're at right now. Okay, go ahead. Once this opens up, it'll be nice. And, and as this plateau, this natural plateau is nice for the home, it'll minimize the foundation cost. There's still some topography, which is good. But once you open this up, I can see beyond the cedar trees that are kind of blocking the view, how this is gonna be gorgeous. And there's gonna be little oak trees all mixed in throughout it. You don't see them until you get those cedars out. But this is the obvious optimal place for both site cost, distance from the road, distance from this neighbor over here, and plenty of width to work with. Now, a lot of people that might be watching this video, they don't realize foundation cost and why it's important to have a builder come walk a lot to give 
different eyes, a different opinion of whether or not a lot is a good lot. And I always recommend to my clients, do that before you buy the lot, before you make that commitment, have a builder come out here. It doesn't cost you anything. The builders want to show their value to you, hoping you decide to use them as a builder. So do not hesitate to call a builder that's building in the price bracket you're looking at and have them come walk these lots. They're happy to do this. And there's builders that their goal is to <clears throat> tell you everything is perfect so they can earn your business. That's not my approach or your approach. We want to give you the honest feedback on a piece of property. If this is going to be an extreme cost in terms of foundation to build on, I'm going to tell you even if that means I lose your business and you never find a lot that you like. This is a this is a good lot. This has a really nice building plateau on it. There's always topography in the hill country. Depending how you position the shape of the home, you can optimally design a home that fits the lot and the topography that you have and potentially save a tree or two that's important to you. If this were my lot, I would do a little more clearing of the small stuff and open up this area. I would do a topography survey, especially in this core area. Maybe not the whole lot. You don't need all back there, but one foot topography. And then I would mark some of the nicer oak trees, maybe half a dozen, so I know exactly where they line up on the lot so that we position and design a house that fits the lot and minimizes those foundation costs. Very cool. All right, let's keep walking this lot a little bit. I'm curious to see how far, I know. this is a larger lot. Uh, I think it's like two and a half acres. It feels even bigger. You're, you're backing up yep. to a ranch that's never gonna be anything in our lifetimes probably. I like that it starts to fall here and then it tanks, but you have more usable space and, and plateaus and tiers here where get rid of these smaller cedars, take it in layers, get rid of the smallest stuff, the medium stuff, and then the big stuff that you want in, in layers. A lot of clients come in, they clear everything and it's super expensive and you can never put certain things back that actually aesthetically look good. So you wanna take it in stages. Like I do notice here in the central part of where we want the house. There is a couple little oak trees here that are nice, but they are in the optimal footprint. I can assure you there will still be nice trees both behind and front of the home, but some, but you gotta listen to the land about how to position the home because you don't wanna waste 50 or $100,000 on foundation that you could otherwise avoid. And I think positioning the house optimally is also optimal for other reasons. This is going to be a killer view once you open it up. Very cool. Usable, usable area. You see a lot of big chunk rock, but they have rock grinding services if, if you wanted to, to kind of get rid of some of those big boulders. Sometimes you can move them around and use them. Property line is over here. Yeah, you see the stakes. Yeah, it's nicely marked in this little clearing. So all the way over here, there's tons of width in this naturally cleared. I mean, look how flat it is. I know these guys are looking to build about a 3,000 square foot house on that. That should fit pretty well right here, I'm assuming. For sure. And the way to distribute it and how to design the home and how to position it will be determined by the shape of the optimal usable platform of, of the flattest area. And that may dictate doing things a little different than, than you had thought. But if you listen to the land, it comes out amazing and you save a lot of money. Very cool. All right, I'm gonna walk back down here a little bit, kind of show see off, see where this it drops off. Part of the property. This old ranch driveway. Look at this tree. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that tree, even though it's technically on the other piece of property, you're still gonna be able to enjoy the view of it. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere because <laughs> it's right on the edge of both properties. <clears throat> there's lots of yeah there's some nice oaks some smaller oaks back there they're all mixed in there and sometimes you have fewer or more than you thought but there's good trees in there i can assure you yeah i'm gonna walk on down here a little further view. i mean you can yeah. see the hillside over there if you open it up I mean, you can see, I don't know what that is, seven to 10 miles, like that's a long ways. Out there, yeah. That doesn't exist anywhere else in Vintage Oaks. Look at this nice tree right here. Oh, there you go. Kind of locked into the rocks and stuff. 
I'm hoping my sound quality is coming out all right. I've got the mics all unplugged, so hopefully you can hear both of me and Trevor. Those trees are, are nice on the perimeter. They'll frame the view. They're not in the way of the optimal view. Really nice trees, the further back you get. All right. You're gonna get a ton of wildlife. I mean, they, they use this valley to move around and there's more deer in there than anywhere else. That's where they live. I'm gonna go crawl through the woods here and hope I don't poke my eye out and uh, kind of show you what, you can start peeking through and seeing what this view looks like. Oh yeah, well I could see, I saw a glimpse of it, but there's a little glimpse of the view out there once you get rid of some of these, uh, some underbrush. You can see somebody's already kind of cleared out some of this. And look at this, I mean that's a nice tree right there on the property. Yep. They're all mixed in there. They're just hidden, for now. You can't hardly see them until you get <clears throat> right up on them. And that's why it's important to walk the lot, and when you do, have an open mind and kind of look through there and try to see the lot as it will be after you clear out some of this underbrush yeah this property line goes on forever on this right side yeah it just keeps going let's see pull out my little fancy dancy app this is where we are right now on the lot so we're just about halfway not even halfway down on the left hand side I know one of my client's desires is for privacy, and this definitely will offer you privacy, especially off the back end. I mean, I don't know if you want me to say this, but I think it goes <clears throat> without saying, in this market, this is a heck of a deal. Yeah. If the market were any faster pace, it's worth 100 grand more all day long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this lot was being sold by the developers. And I believe uh, my clients got it under option right now for 260. That's amazing. I have another client that found something north of the lake, the same kind of <coughs> deal. That's awesome. Everybody wants a view. Everyone wants privacy. Yeah. Most people, it's impossible. You can't find it. And when you find it, they want 500,000 for it. But there's where it really starts dropping off down there on the side. It's a valley. Like it is significant and it's unique and it's a piece of hill country this doesn't exist mm -hmm. <laughs> anywhere else in this area yeah it's really cool and but, you can get down there and explore it yeah and you're not this isn't something where you want to build a house and then a casita on the back part of the property but this is a neat little place to explore do you think they're on that clearing spot before it drops off would there be room for a casita possibly there's room it's got enough width okay good but when you do that topography survey, it doesn't lie. And seeing where some of those better oaks are, that helps you lay out and position things and see how much space you have and how it's all gonna piece together. Okay. That's the first step. Everyone makes the mistake of, I want this and that, and they ram it into a square peg into a round hole. This has plenty of room to do everything you'd wanna do. So a lot of lots don't. Nice. This one does. And okay. you can see, this whole valley is full of dead underbrush and these little cedars that look like little, you know, Christmas trees. That's easy stuff to push over and when there's, you know, not burn bands in effect, be safe and burn it or haul it away or grind it up. There's different services, but this is going to be gorgeous property once you get rid of that. It, it kind of chokes it out and it blocks the beauty of it. I can see it because I've seen so many properties be cleared of what they can become. Yeah, if you want to become a... Uh... Somebody who likes to do a little work with their hands when the day's not, well, the weather's nice. You can do it by hand, you can pay somebody, you can do a mixture, you can take it in stages or all at one time. But this is definitely enough to keep you busy. All right, I'll walk down just a little bit further here. I know this video is getting long. So if you're still with us, I definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate Trevor with Grand Endeavor giving us his time and being willing to put this information out there on video. Because he and I both have the same mindset of there's never such, no such thing as too much information. So tell everybody everything that you can. It's hard to get factual information and unbiased. <clears throat> and even though we're in the business of helping people with real estate, it's just not our mantra to put someone in a position of buying something that they shouldn't. I'll be the first one to tell you. Yeah. It doesn't get any better than that price for this <clears throat> Yeah, and the fact that this road's still gonna always be there. I mean, if look at this tree back here. 
Yeah. And you see like 90% are just these little one inch cedars. Yeah. You just push them, push them out. I know about your client, but I don't know if you purchase or rent a small bobcat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's easy stuff. Well, it'll definitely be something you'd want a little quad. And then you can just have fun driving up and down this little trail here. It's not natural, Ooh. but it looks natural. But it's like the cliff in the distance and that view back and to the right. Mm -hmm. It's so distant from up on the hill. I haven't seen that. If that's from the that's from the road there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's cool, though. <laughs> the road sounds you're hearing is uh, 2272. And this natural drainage runs yep. down the property line. But still, this is drivable if you have a nice little quad, which in Vintage Oaks, a lot of people have them because they also take them go out to the amenity center and just tootle around the area see all we're noticing all we see are these nice oak trees sprinkled on this property yep. line it's all the way across yeah you just can't see it <clears throat> so much property oh there's some trash and that happens sometimes. Hard to say where that came from, but obviously. Oh, I see a paint bucket. So yeah. Contractor came some back. Some of here. the trades. When you get some of these trades, I had this happen on a different property, where you could tell their supervisor said get rid of this trash, and they didn't want to drive all the way to the dump, so they found a vacant lot and dumped it. And we are, we are at this point on the neighboring property this is not going to be their issue oh you're right we, we are looking at the app here we've got this road does go on to the neighbor's property see where the blue dot's at so that's odd that this road goes on to the neighboring property <laughs> yep Okay, yeah, I see the property line sticks right over there. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna make our way back to the actual property itself. That's an old ranch fence. Yeah. We may not oh. <laughs> Uh, no, we're still off by a little bit. For sure. Yeah, we're still within that neighboring property. Look how deep it is. Yeah. You can't, you're not going to see it in the video, but this is like a gorgeous piece of That drops of valley off. Hill the thing. actual property line is actually way down there. Because, like, if you want to geologically explore, it's like a a dream for some people to, met, to go down there. So, yeah, walking down the road... You go off your property line, and it looks like... Uh, this is, I'm going to guess, they had to purchase some of this land from Stallman. Yeah, they did. That's the story that I'd heard. As it goes, I can see the fence over there. There's a secondary fence across the valley. That's the property line. Yeah. Crazy. So right now we're trying to figure out where there's a break in the fence and get back to this property line. The lot owners, obviously, you can take this down. Some of it's been removed here. <clears throat> so there is kind of a trail. Yeah. Let's walk. So Try to see there. if I can go. Because this is a pretty good drop off. I'm not going to get too close. That's so cool. But yeah, the actual property line for the property my client's looking at is... We are on the property line, right? Left. Yep, this we are on the property line. I see in the top there, and, then it crosses the and it goes way down into this ravine here. So that's pretty cool. So, the property line is basically the top of this ridge that we're on, and everything else is back down in the valley. Other side over there. The All right, let's keep exploring. All right, we are back on the property, showing the location right there. You see the big rock line. That is the edge of the property line. You can see kind of a fence there, but wow, this view back here is just breathtaking. 
And me and Trevor were talking. He's like, yeah, you might be able to find like dinosaur bones and stuff back there. <laughs> You'd be panning for gold. Yeah, panning for some gold back there. But we are actually on the property this now. It's just kind of weird. The road just kind of curves, but this is actual property. So Look at some of the bigger trees. There's tons of character of <clears throat> trees back here. Mm -hmm. This is the old Stallman Ranch fence that they acquired across the creek. It's a fire sale. The timing of buying a property like this from Vintage Oaks, this is the best deal, to be honest, yeah. like that they've ever sold. When they released this, they mm -hmm. would have sold it for three fifty to three seventy. dollars Yeah, and I think they just want to be done. I thought Vintage Oaks was done, but I guess they slowly keep acquiring more little pieces of the Stallman Ranch. Nice tree. So yeah, if this is a good spot, if you did want to build your own little road down this fence line. Right on the perimeter and stuff. It's, yeah, it's, it's topography, but it's usable until we get to the <clears throat> drop off into the yeah. Final Once we creek drop bed. off into the creek bed that runs uh, the back side of the property. So I'll keep you posted. Uh, seeing the blue dot where we're at, we're kind of at the back part of the property here. We're still not in the middle. I mean, it's no. massive back here. And we got another fence line and it looks like we got some uh, hiking through the woods. Glad I brought my wood, woods hiking boots today instead of my good ones. Me too. <laughs> Man, I don't know if we're gonna get people up there. Yeah, it looks like there's a space right here to get through. They purchased a, even more than that back there, a big chunk of this property. From All right, where we're at, kind of right in the middle. Well, the widest part of the property anyways. If we keep going up through here, we should eventually hit property line, but it looks like we're hitting some nasty stuff. All right, you see the little stake back there? We're back at the edge of the property line. Still got some amazing views from here. And then we're also going, heading right back to the road, heading back up. So for the most part, this road is on the property line. It just kind of veers off, off the property line as you get toward the bottom. <clears throat> Alright, a little winded now, but we have back up to the main par property area, the good build site. So, uh, I think Trevor has given his seal of approval on this lot. For sure. So, definitely flat enough space here to build this main area. Even wide enough to the casita. If you go back there, amazing views. Uh, definitely some topography going back there, but it's really cool space. But this can be a bread and butter of the property. Somebody knew that. They opened it up. And this is definitely a little Texas Hill Country flat. <clears throat> you are gonna have more foundation in the back. To the front. No, it's just normal and it lifts you up for that view to look down and <coughs> see that, that view better. Yep. But it's not cost prohibitive. It's not like the people are like, oh my gosh, that's going to be an extra $80,000 on top of a normal foundation. Most of the lots on this row, yes. An extra 80 to 150. I priced one for 250 grand more for a foundation. Ooh. This lot is nothing like those, it's way flatter. Good to know. And that's why we're out here doing this. Okay, we're, I believe we're now on the other people's property again. <coughs> All right, I hope you found this video tour informative. I know it's a little bit long, but there's a lot to see on this lot. If you did like it, you hit that like button to my channel and as always share these videos with friends and family especially if you know someone considering moving to the beautiful texas hill country all right take care now bye